Hi, I'm going to show you one of two methods that I use for making your background larger in post-production. Um, here I was using um, one, a narrow uh, seamless paper backdrop and as you can see there's a big mess on either side and I don't always want these, I mean the easiest thing to do would be to crop this as a portrait orientation but I wanted to have a landscape orientation and I wanted it to look, um, I wanted to give a good bit of space around um, both the mother and the baby here. So this method here is just to, to stretch it and paint it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to crop the way I would like to give it them the space that I would like around them. Okay, now notice I'm not cropping below where she is because I don't want to have to fill in this information myself. I don't want to start having to draw people in. So I only want to really just paint the backdrop and it's just a plain backdrop so it should be easy enough. So um, I'm going to tilt her, I'm going to rotate the crop slightly as well to straighten her up a bit. And I think that would be a nice crop. Okay, so, the f so I'm going to duplicate my layer and on the duplicated part, I'm going to take as much information that's there already and I'm going to stretch it. And you just pull it all the way out to the edge. Now, when Photoshop, there is um, a Photoshop uh, CS5 has content aware scale, um, which is a better way of doing it, but because not that many people have that, I'm going to use just the ordinary scale. And then I'm going to do this on all sides. And the way Photoshop scales thing, it actually stretches the pixels. Um, which isn't which isn't that great, so that's why we're going to fix that by painting over. Okay, so once the, all the information is there, obviously you can't, you know, she has a full background around her, but obviously you can't use it like that because the pixels look awful stretched like that. So I'm going to flatten that down, and I'm going to make a new layer, just a new plain layer. And on top of that layer, I'm going to start painting. So I'm going to get my brush, and I'm just going to sample the color that's there already. Um, I'm going to make it 50, so I suppose about 50% to start off with, and I'm going to start painting. And I'm just painting the color that I would like it to be. I'm trying not to go too far off the color that's there, but I, do, I don't want to be afraid of the shadows either. I'm not afraid of this shadow down here because I don't want it to look like she's just floating in space. So I'm going to leave a little bit darker around the outsides. And what I'm trying to do at the moment is paint over the um, those stretched pixels. And then if you feel that your paintbrush is making too much of an impact, you can just lower the opacity again and paint until it's nice and smooth, but do keep some of those shadows in there. So once your background is nice and realistic, I've, I've made it a little bit darker here in the corners, sort of like a little vignette. And um, once you're happy with how that might look, you need to go in and take off um, what's painted over the subject here. So for that, I'm going to make a mask. And on the mask square there, I'm going to paint in black at 100%. And at the start, I go almost to the edge, make the brush smaller, and then go all the way to the edge, take the opacity down. So you then you can click it on and off and you can see where it's still affecting the subject. Okay. So once you have it like that, another kind of important thing to do is to click on the, the bit that you painted and 
give it a little bit of noise so it doesn't look like it's too smooth so you can add noise now if you keep it on monochromatic and uniform really low like two percent you know almost none but just enough to give it a little bit of texture so it doesn't look too smooth okay and then we'll flatten that down the next thing I'm going to do is what I would usually do is I want to um, even up the color so I'm going to use my a little warmth action and on that I'm going to invert that so that I can just paint on that color with white so this baby's legs were a little bit more purple and I'm not going to go all the way up to the chest or all the way up to the head because the head is a more similar color to the mum and um, I'm also going to use red skin removal just to get the little I'm going to use that at 100% just to get that little bit of redness off the feet and hands and a little bit on the cheeks and just for the sake of speed I'm going to skin smooth with portraiture um, so I'm going to just run it at default and then put the opacity of that layer down to about 50% and erase off the bits that I want to keep nicely in focus. And what I'm also going to run on this which I think would look quite nice, is the aubergine. And I'm going to just keep it nice and low. So around 60% there. And maybe just a little, I'm going to add a little bit of punch as well with levels. So there we have a picture that looks like it was taken in a big studio with a big paper seamless behind it, but it was just really taken on a very small seamless.